Hi, everyone. It's Carol from Tapping Into Sleep. And what I wanted to talk about today was, is it harder for you to fall asleep, like say on a Sunday evening, knowing that you have a busy week coming, or maybe even on the first night after vacation? And how can we use tapping to help us get over those jitters of not being able to fall asleep? So before we continue, if you haven't done so already, just click on the disclaimer in the comments below and go to my website, read my disclaimer, and then come back here and let's do some tapping. All right, so before we do some tapping, let's set this up. So what is happening actually that when we, um, it's Sunday night and we know we have a big week coming, what is happening that we're not able to fall asleep? So the first thing I want you to think of is uh, did you change your sleep schedule during the weekend? So what I mean by that is a lot of times I'll have clients or even myself think, oh, it's the weekend, so I'm going to stay up later and then I'll just wake up later, which is fine if you're still functioning. But what happens on Sunday night is that actually on Sunday morning, you've slept in later. And so Sunday night, you haven't had enough hours awake to fill your sleep drive bucket. So your sleep drive bucket is an expression I came up with because we need to build our sleep drive with enough adenosine, which is the molecule that builds in our brain that allows for sleepiness to come. And so when we build our sleep drive bucket and it's full, it's it's signals our mind and body to go to sleep. But what happens when we've gotten out of bed later and now we're trying to go to bed at the same time as usual, we haven't given ourselves or body enough hours awake to fill that sleep drive bucket. So we're actually, our mind and body is not ready to fall asleep. Therefore, it makes it difficult for us to fall asleep. So what could you do about that? Uh, choices are, well, stick to your regular schedule, right? So even on the weekends, I wake up at five or 5.30 at the latest. Um, it's ingrained in me now is what my body does, even without an alarm clock. I'm usually in bed by nine. So on the weekend, if I choose to stay up later, I'll still wake up earlier and I'll just have like maybe one hour or two hours left sleep. But then I know that Sunday night I'll go to bed and I won't have this issue of my sleep dry bucket not being full enough. Um, the second thing it could be on Sunday night to just choose to go to bed an hour later and then know that when you wake up, then you'll be back on track. And just being aware of this can actually help shift your mindset already and remove the anxiety. But what happens if, because you're not able to go to sleep on Sunday night and you know you have a big presentation or something big going on on Monday and all this anxiety and this apprehension and this tension builds up in your body. This is where we can use tapping as a routine that evening to actually remove the emotions or reduce them so that then when it is time and your body feels tired, you won't continue that negative thought loop that will then keep you awake longer than what your body actually wants to go to sleep. I hope I made sense with all of that. I know it's making sense in my head. So let's just do some tapping. So let's pretend that we're Sunday night, right? Your hands on your heart, Sunday night. You're seeing yourself not able to fall asleep. So just, you know, just tune into that, tune into your body. Zero to a 10, how regulated do you feel? So zero is regulated, 10 is dysregulated, right? So zero to a 10, where are you? Write that number down. I'm going to ask you another question. What's the emotion that you're feeling? What's the thought that's coming into your mind as you're thinking, this is Sunday night and I need to go to sleep, but my body, my brain won't let me go to sleep, even though we know all about the sleep drive bucket and that your body will eventually fall asleep. But what is that thought that you have right now? So the thought that just popped into my mind is, what if I can't sleep? And what if what everything Carol said is not true and I will still stay awake, right? So when I think of that, that brings anxiety into my chest that I will be laying there for hours without sleeping. And actually the, the anxiety just moved up to my throat. So just being fully aware of what's going on in your body. And I'm going to put that anxiety at a five right now. Okay, so let's do a first round on that. So what I want you to do is whatever came up for you, even though you're going to use my words, you're going to measure on what came up for you. So put your emotion down and all that, write down the number and let's do some tapping. All right, so even though I'm now feeling this anxiety in my throat because it's Sunday night and I'm just laying here awake, unable to sleep. I deeply and completely accept that this is what's happening in this moment. 
And even though I'm feeling this anxiety in my throat, as I lay here awake, unable to fall asleep on this Sunday night, in this moment, I'm okay. And even though I do feel this anxiety in my throat, what if I won't fall asleep? Even though Carol just said, I most likely will fall asleep with my sleep drive bucket is full. What if I don't fall asleep? Right here, right now, I'm okay. All this anxiety in my throat. All this anxiety in my throat. Yeah, what if I can't fall asleep? What if I just won't fall asleep when I'm supposed to? And that is not going to leave me with enough hours in my bed. I won't have enough hours to get a full night of good sleep. This anxiety in my throat. Because what if I can't function tomorrow? What if I can't function enough tomorrow? Because I'm laying here unable to fall asleep. It's Sunday night and I'm not able to fall asleep. And now my mind is reminding me that I have a big day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And the longer I lay here, the worse my anxiety gets. But what if, what if what Carol said was true? What if I'm only struggling to sleep on this Sunday night because, because I slept in later this morning? So if that's true, That means that I will eventually have a full sleep drive bucket. And I will eventually fall asleep. So what do I know to be true about that? Well, I know that I most likely will still function tomorrow. I know that I will eventually fall asleep. And I also know that tomorrow night I won't have this issue, right? Because I'll go to bed at my normal time tomorrow night. And I will also wake up at my normal time tomorrow morning. So I will be resetting my sleep drive bucket. Now, just as I've said that, I brought this calm over me because now I know that I might struggle a little bit tonight, but that'll be okay tomorrow, right? So putting your hands on your heart, I want you to tune in again. So I had anxiety as a five, out of five. That's what I started measuring. So I want to know what my anxiety is right now, thinking that it's Sunday night and I'm not able to fall asleep. So my anxiety is down about a three. So once you fit down your number, I want to get you to ask yourself this question. Like, why do I still have anxiety? Right. And so what's coming up in my mind is I'm thinking, okay, well, I've had many Sunday nights like that. So can I really change that? Like that's the thought that's going in my mind, right? So let's do some tapping on that. 
knowing that you're going to have your own reason, your own thought, and I want you to focus on what your thought is in your mind, right? So even though I still have some anxiety showing up, and now it's more in my chest area. Can I, because can I really believe that I'll go to sleep, right? Can I really believe that this can be a non-issue tomorrow night? Yeah, I acknowledge that those are the questions that are popping in my mind right now. And even though I do still feel some anxiety in my chest, because the question in my mind right now is, can this really be only for one night? Can I really sleep better tomorrow night? I acknowledge that this is how I'm feeling. Even though I still feel some anxiety in my chest right now. Right here, right now, I'm okay. Right top of the head. Right here, right now, I'm okay. I still have some anxiety in my chest. I still feel some anxiety in my chest, but I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to let go of this anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to feel the peace and calm in my body. And even if I have to get up and go do some reading for the next hour, Sleep will come. And I will reset my sleep system. And tomorrow night will be better. Tomorrow night will be better. I've got this. I can reset my sleep system. This anxiety can leave now. I'm safe and I'm going to go to sleep. All right, hands on your heart. How did that round feel? I know I can feel the anxiety just kind of, I'm breathing like I'm just breathing deeper. I also feel like my shoulders are not as high up, they're slumped lower. That's what happens when I'm tapping. When I start relaxing and my nervous system starts calming down, I start feeling better. And it shows by my posture. So just notice that in your body. Right. All right. So this is where we're going to stop tapping, but I wanted to just bring this up for you that it is normal sometimes on a Sunday night or on the night after like a week or two vacation that we have to get back to our schedule, back to our routine. And we've been out of routine for a little bit. It is normal to have this anxiety and struggle with sleep sometimes. Um, as long as we know that it is just because of the actions and behaviors that we had done previously that it's causing this and that it doesn't mean that it's going to continue. And we don't want to let those negative sleep thoughts get into our mind and then continue. And that will cause us to struggle with sleep more. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to your comments. And if you need help getting your sleep back on track, book your optimal sleep assessment. The link is in the description of this video. And I look forward to helping you on your journey to better sleep. Bye.